This is a 30-year-old male with history of penetrating trauma to the cornea, resulting in a self-sealing corneal laceration, ruptured anterior capsule with formation of traumatic cataract, and posterior synechia. The aim of the procedure was to release the posterior synechia, aspirate the traumatic cataract, and implant an intraocular lens, preferably within the capsular bag if the posterior capsule was intact. The procedure started by making two paracentesis 180 degrees from each other that will facilitate the use of a bimanual irrigation aspiration technique. Then, vision blue was injected into the anterior chamber to enhance the visibility of the anterior capsule. Using viscoelastic cannula and viscoelastic substance, the posterior synechia was relieved and viscodilation was achieved as well as forming the anterior chamber. Then, the lens was aspirated with the use of bimanual irrigation aspiration, uh, making sure not to apply any tension over the anterior capsular edges that uh, might cause the ruptured anterior capsule run more posteriorly. Another important point is to maintain the anterior chamber stability during the procedure. That will decrease the risk of posterior capsular involvement in the rupture. And this is achieved by injecting viscoelastic substance before going out with the irrigating cannula. After switching hands, the same technique is repeated and luckily the posterior capsule was intact and the traumatic cataract was removed completely. Again, you can notice that we are injecting viscoelastic substance before going out with the irrigating cannula, maintaining the anterior chamber. Then, viscoelastic substance injected in the bag as well as in the anterior chamber, taking care not to overinflate the capsular bag to avoid any uh, increase in the intracapsular pressure that will cause radialization of the anterior capsular edges. The main wound was then performed in a typical manner of cataract surgery, followed by using a pair of intraocular scissors that can be used to snip the anterior edges of the capsular bag to allow enlargement of the capsular excess. That will facilitate the implantation of the intraocular lens as well as preventing any contracture of the anterior capsule postoperatively. Same maneuver was then repeated on the other side of the capsular rupture. Since the posterior capsule was still intact with healthy zonules, a preloaded three-piece intraocular lens was implanted in the bag with the haptics 90 degrees away from the capsular rupture that will minimize any extension posteriorly. Tano nylon suture is then placed at the main wound followed by removal of viscoelastic substance, another suture placed at the paracentesis, and with the use of fluorescein, the wounds were checked for integrity, and the self-sealing corneal laceration held tightly throughout the procedure.